cortisol. Did you just steal one? Yep. one? <laughs> he had two. Oh, well, maybe that's why. <laughs> All right. Opportunist. That's what I mean. All right. So, cortisol and melatonin are supposed to be an inverse relationship. So one of the one of the mechanisms of sleep problems and staying asleep is this. Is it in simple, oversimplified terms, cortisol's job is to go find you fuel when you run out of fuel. Hey, go hunt and gather. Go hunt down a buffalo for us so we can eat and build up our, our fuel supply. So then it stands to reason cortisol actually actively competes with melatonin. Because if you're supposed to be eating and hunting and gathering, you're not supposed to be sleeping. So one of the problems that people that have had brain injuries and their systems aren't as efficient and whatnot is that we start to burn up. Like we're supposed to have, I, when I teach, I kind of liken it to like, a, I'll use the analogy, like a, we're supposed to be like a bear going into hibernation every night. We're supposed to build up good fat and protein stores and it gets stored in our like liver and muscles and stuff in a, in a, in a it's called glycogen. And then we snip off all night, we snip off glycogen molecules to have that glucose to get through for our heart or you know, all these functions that still happen all night. Problem is with people that have had injuries or their diet isn't good, you know, there's so many different things that can cause this, but um, when you're burning through the fuel supply because your system's not as efficient, you don't have as much stored glycogen. So in the middle of the night, your body starts saying, hey, shoot, wake up, go hunt and gather for us. Wake up, go hunt and gather for us. And so it'll actually start to compete with melatonin. You wake up and you're like, why am I awake right now? So one of the things to keep in mind for that is just keep some sort of like fat or protein. Usually it's supposed to be like a protein source like mixed nuts or something like that next to your bed. Just take a handful of mixed nuts because that will help stabilize your glucose levels and help get you back to sleep. So that's something to you know consider as well. Only I could take nuts. Yeah, that's true. You can't eat anything. So um, until we build up that tolerance, then uh, so you, let's see. You could do salmon and uh, sweet potatoes. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I mean, I suppose you could have. It'd be kind of weird, but I guess you could have sweet potatoes. Can you do? Yeah. Can you? I'm just gonna ask. Can you, can you tolerate the, the actual dried version of it? Oh. No. Okay. I can eat salmon. Like I, 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 I eat it anyways when I wake up right away. If I don't want my head to hurt, so I just didn't think I should also keep it next to me right. all night. Right, right, right. You get the wafting of the aroma kind of thing. <laughs> so that might wake you up in another cell. Eat me. All right, does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, the bottom line is if we can get fuel in you, then. That, that can be one of those factors that helps stabilize and so that you're not being told, wake up, wake up, wake up, kind of thing, so. All right, give me the RRT release. Sure, I guess we can try that. All right, so what I'm gonna have you do first 